Hi, this is Lips. And this is Rob Reiner. And we're from the band Anvil. And you're on BackstageAccess.com. Where the real show begins. BackstageAccess.com. We are here in Buffalo, New York at the Alice Cooper and Anvil show. We are here with the other power trio that is known as Canada's finest power trio. Anvil, we're here with Rob and Lips. How are you guys? How are you doing? Good, good. We're, doing we're all doing well. great, man. <laughs> uh, the guys are here. going to be opening up for Alice Cooper very shortly, and I uh, can't wait to get this interview started. And um, You guys are here with the legend, Alice Cooper, and you guys obviously played a bunch of dates earlier this year with Alice. What type of relationship do you guys have with him? I mean, obviously, you guys keep on opening up for him, so it must be pretty positive, right? Well, we got to meet him, uh, <laughs> and he's a really, really good guy. <laughs> he's a very humble and, and down-to-earth guy. Uh, that's all I can really say about him. You know, I think it's a great package. The band's musical uh, compatibility, right. I think, is really good between his band and ours. The audience seems to be working in our favor. You know, a lot of people come to see us. We're winning a lot of fans over. That's all I can say. I, I think it's a great package. Yeah. Um, the band just released its 14th studio album, Juggernaut of Justice. And um, I'm sure there was a lot of pressure on you guys because obviously with the, the movie, <laughs> you know. I was laughing. Because, uh, <laughs> no, that, you know, yeah. there really wasn't any pressure, was there, Lips? No, it's not really a question of pressure. It, it, it's actually, it really was the other way around because what got removed was all the peripheral garbage that comes with, you know, going, going in to do a record. Um, this time it wasn't there. Like all the stuff, like, are we going to get a record deal? Is anybody going to ever listen to this? Is, uh, uh, where are we going to get the money from? Uh, who's going to put it out? How are we going to, you know, how are we going to move yeah. forward? All those things were all completely yeah, not place. there. So it's, it's, it was all it came down to. All we have to do is think about writing great songs. Great. Yeah. And it was yeah. like a lot of fun. And we uh, were very focused when we wrote this, all the material. We were in a great place, you know. Everything was really uh, changing for us. So, all like Lip said, all we had to do is just be Anvil. And that, that was the easiest thing to do. So, actually, it's the opposite of what I'm thinking because I thought, oh, my God, you know, now everybody's actually focusing on us. We have to come out with a great product. But you're saying the opposite pretty much. Uh, absolutely. The only thing that we felt that w was a, a necessary and a must, that we uh, needed to step up the level of production. Okay, and that had to happen, and we, yeah, we, we did had that. To, we had to surpass what we'd been doing, or at least do something fresh and newer yeah. than what we had been doing. And what we, what it, that ended up going down the road, we had to change producers, and now, th that made a huge uh, yeah. a huge difference and it brought because a fresh it's, it's to the band. yeah, it added a whole new fresh. Uh, perspective. Had we kept on going with the same producer, it would have just been more of the same, which is probably not. What we not, needed, yeah, you, know, was, you know, we, we really needed. wanted to step it up, and we were looking for something Take a little bit different. Yeah. Bob Marlett was the producer for this, and Bob's uh, produced, uh, well, Alice Cooper, who's here tonight, and Tony Iommi and Seether. Why, why did you guys decide to go with Bob, and what did he add that you guys needed? It's actually quite interesting. Lips he made gave the us, choice. He gave us, okay, uh, okay. The, 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 our management uh, sent us a, 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 a few names, and I began doing interviews with them talking with them on the phone and I was looking for a producer that played keyboards that's what I was really looking I wanted a guy who can play keyboards and wasn't intimidated by work and what I mean by work I went in I wanted to go in and approach the vocals the way I've been in approaching guitars for the last 15 20 years and that's come in and make them up as I go like Put, put in, well, not necessarily just make it up, but make up the right thing, right. you know, and that way you can microscope it and look at it right there rather than come in and thwart a whole bunch of ideas into your music that maybe don't belong, but because you're so well rehearsed at it, you can't hear beyond it. I wanted to leave the door open for spontaneity, and that's what the whole point was. And when I went and talked to the producers, when I talked to Bob and I said look at I want to I'm going to come in with basic ideas of what I want to do vocally but I'm leaving it open I'm not I'm not I haven't etched it in stone 
the, the lyrics are writ, all written in pencil. <laughs> you know, anything can change, and I'm going to want to leave it open so that we do it all correctly. He wasn't intimidated by that. One of the, a couple of the other producers, when I said that, they just went, oh, really? Because generally, a producer will will not want to do his job in the, in the sense he wants it to be really easy, have these guys all super prepared, and all I do is twiddle the knobs and make it sound good. I don't want to have to think about anything. But Bob is the kind of person that, what, you want me to, my opinion, musically? You want me to give, yes, I, I, I'm loved, yes. And all those positive, that positive uh, passion that I could hear in his voice, I knew it was the right guy. I said, okay, and that was it. Went with that, yeah. Bob, and it worked out yeah, amazing. Yeah, Bob was a very big, fresh uh, kick to the whole band sound. You know, one of, one of a really important question, one of the first qu questions that I asked, how old are you? And by asking how old the producer is, that tells you what era and what music he's grown up with. And as it turns out, we were six months apart. So I knew that, well, he's been listening to everything I've ever heard, so yeah, we, it's we, all good. We chanced upon Bob, and we made magic. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and a lot of things, there's a lot of serendipity and a lot of really, you know, uh, important things that happened because we made that right choice. But, of course, you didn't know initially when you made the choice that it was, you know, how correct it was. But one example, of course, is the song, um, the song Swing Thing. We'd, I'd gone in with the idea I'm going to write us uh, uh, an instrumental that uses that is really big band swing, except it didn't have horns, but I wanted horns. And when we when I went into the studio, of course we we recorded the the, the bed tracks and whatnot, and I said to Bob, I go, uh, we need to find we need to put horns on this song, and he goes, no problem, my wife plays. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. There's the answer to that problem, and it, it came with the producer. Like, you know, it's not like we had to start making calls and look for a trumpet player or a trombonist or a clarinetist. It's like my wife can play all the wind instruments, and she's really, really good. And I, okay, I, I'll go with that. And the thing, it, the song is stupendous, absolutely mind boggling to me, anyway. Yeah, uh, swing thing, cutting edge. <laughs> Um, I don't know if the fans out there know this, but uh, you guys use Dave Grohl's uh, Studio 606, uh, well, it's called 606 in uh, Northridge, California. How did it come about where you guys got to use Dave's studio? Well, we, we, we Dave were, offered it up to us. Yeah, Dave <laughs> offered it up to us. What initially happened, uh, we, were, we were at the, the Spirit Awards, which is Independent Spirit Awards. It's uh, the yeah. Academy Awards, basically, for independently made movies. movies. Uh, Dave was contacted by VH1, who was supporting the, ba the, the band and putting out the, the movie and so forth, and was asked, would you like to come down and introduce the band? And he, nothing I want more. And he, like, shows up, pulls up in a limousine, <laughs> gets out of the limo, and he's carrying a guitar case, and I'm thinking, great, he's going to play metal on metal with us. Puts the guitar case down beside me, hugs me, goes, who brought you a present? This is a Dave Grohl signature Gibson guitar. You're the only one probably in all of metal that has, has the love for the semi-hollow, and I'm giving this to you as a gift. I, I flipped out. I mean, that's, that's mind-boggling. Um, of course, you know, he introduced the band, and he was, he was given a piece of paper. This is what you got to read. He ripped up the piece of paper, went on stage, <laughs> said exactly what he wanted to say, which is absolutely beautiful like like flowers and you know, after just, the performance he said to us that he has a studio and we should record a new album at his studio yeah he wanted to said and that he insists that we come it, yeah. to his studio and record and if we don't he'll never talk to us again <laughs> that so we said to exact him, don't worry about okay. it <laughs> and when we walked into the studio the first thing you know that's displayed inside the big room is the motorhead flag I mean, as soon as you see that, you go, we've we're come. in the right place. <laughs> we're in the right place. <laughs> it's like a home away from home. This is great. Yeah. Um, 
The next release that you guys have, Monumental Metal, uh, will be released next month on uh, N Records, September 22nd. Or, I'm sorry, September 27th. Um, How did you guys pick those songs? Was it something like a collaboration between you and the record company, or no, did you guys no, do no, it yourselves? No, no, we did it ourselves. Uh, and uh, It could have been any of, any of the 130 songs that we have. You know, We just decided that this time around we wanted to focus more on the overall variety of Anvil than just one aspect. So we just decided on those tracks that there that are there. Somehow. Yeah, they're kind of our favorite, whatever we thought was our favorite from each album, and we put it on there. That's it could have been any other compilation, and the next one we do, we'll have different songs. You know, we, we plan on doing many of these over the years. You know, and you guys are actually on a cruise. I think it's a Sweden rock cruise with Helix. Tell us about how you guys got involved with that. Well, actually, we've uh, what what happened in in Sweden is it's actually quite remarkable. There was this. Yeah. It's a bit of a story to that. Uh, yeah, it, it, it turned into this thing. Well they, well, they ran the movie, and of course, it really struck a chord there big time. And um, the radio station went into, one of the radio stations went in on this thing. Let's put metal on metal on the top of the iTunes charts. Everybody go buy the, go, go download this. Yeah, like and they put it to number it. one. They sent it to number one. Yeah. <laughs> and of course. It was number one for a while. There. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the promoters and so forth, everybody, it, it, it's got sparked up on Anvil. Well, we were booked into the fir into the springtime, uh, the springtime cruise. Uh, cruise, and we were also booked in a ab festival. about a week later after we got booked at that. They booked us at a at, at a big huge festival, Metal Town, in, festival Metal Town in Gothenburg, Sweden, and. The people at the at the festival said that you can't go do the cruise and 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 do the festival. So oh, you got to choose one or the you other. You know, you got to choose one or the other. So uh, it wasn't a problem with the uh, the Sweden rock cruise people. They said, well, then we'll just put them on in the fall because they do two a year. They do two a year, one in the spring, one in the fall. So they just switched one for the other. That's all. Yeah. So we ended up doing it in the fall. And you guys are going on tour with Saxon later this year. Um, what? It, yeah, right. And what can the fan, European fans expect from your tour out with Saxon? Oh, well, they're going to expect lots of cool new tunes. Yeah, we're playing a lot of the new songs, and we're very excited about it. And, and Saxon, and we get along really well with, with those guys. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a, a great, a really, a, really good that's package. That's it's great a, a great package. metal package for Europe, and I think it's... It really, really well balanced. It works very will work very like, well. It worked very, really, really well in the UK last year. So they asked us to come and do Europe with them this year. So it's all yeah, it should be really good. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. Last year I, I saw you guys live when you came to the town ballroom, and um, I have to say up until that point, well, actually, it's up until today, I should say, Rob, you were the best drum solo I've ever saw. I was actually blown away by your drum solo. And it was oh, it was you. it was amazing, and obviously everybody considers Neil Peart your uh, Canadian counterpart, so to speak, as a you know drum god. And um, did you ever get to meet Neil Peart? Did you, have you guys ever shared any type of you know uh, tricks of the trade, so to speak? Well, no, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Neil okay. uh, to this day, um, but I look forward to the day that we do meet. I seem to follow in his shadow for some reason. <laughs> I'm quite humbled by that. And uh, I think Canada produces probably the best drummers the world's ever I, seen. I, 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 can't, I can't disagree with that. I mean, you, you, if you haven't seen these guys live, you have to see them. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost it's a metal version of Rush. It's just, uh, and like I was talking about earlier, a power trio that's beyond uh, just fantastic. And I also saw you guys at Heavy TL this year, and you guys kicked ass there. Oh, yeah, that was a tremendous real, 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 that real that was great time. amazing. Yeah, that was a great time. Uh, I was reading in uh, the bio that uh, actually a long, long time ago that Sebastian Bach actually filled in for you. Is that true? That Sebastian no, Bach actually no, did? No. no. Is that a rumor? No, he, didn't, he didn't fill in. No, we, uh, we, 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 the, we the, there was a gas club works. called the Gasworks in and Toronto. They closed it. They closed it, and um, they asked us to. Uh, they asked be us part to, of it. to be part of it, and as it turned out, I had I had tickets to go to Florida, Florida, and I I I wasn't going to cancel my vacation. <laughs> So Sebastian said, well, then I'll just go, I'll, I'll just sing metal on metal and we'll do a couple songs. Yeah. So that's all it that's was. All it that was, it was. You know, he just kind of jammed with uh, 
the other guy, uh, uh, the rest of us, kind of. You know, and we did a few uh, skid row tunes. It was like a, a fr- it was like a jam. Yeah, uh, that's really what it was. Well, everybody out there who's I'm sure going to watch this uh, interview has seen the story of Anvil, and that really obviously put you guys back on the map. Um, going back on it, because obviously we're talking a couple of years now, and it's not right after the movie. Obviously, it's changed you guys. Um, looking back on it, obviously there's been a lot more positive than negative, but you know, tell us a little bit about both. You know, what's the best thing, and obviously it's happened, and maybe uh, maybe you guys aren't as you guys get bothered a little bit more. You know, you guys can't go to a grocery store or something like that. I, I don't know. But yeah, what's the negative part of it? I love it, man. No, it's the way, hey, it, because of such, uh, because of the enormous amount of time that we've spent trying to get to where we are. Now that it's here, it's not the time to be going, I hate when people come up to me. <laughs> it's like, I've waited so long for this to happen. It's like, it's amazing. It is, and uh, I think some of the most bizarre things is walking down the street in New York City and some guy's yelling from across the street, hey, Lips, and I'm turning around. Who is it that's calling me? That I must know them. Who knows me? And then I'm, all of a sudden it comes and dawns on me, hey, wait a minute, I'm famous. I don't know this guy. <laughs> It's been more positive for us. We've been living for the dream. We're living the dream now. So we're just enjoying it and, and, and finding fun with it, you know? It, it's it's what we've wanted and it's great. You know, we're getting played to thousands of people now. We travel over the world. What more what, what more, more would what, we could, want, what is right? that what could there be negative about that? <laughs> um we're doing what we want. You guys looking forward to obviously got the Taurus X and you're doing the cruise. What can the fans expect uh, going into 2012 for Manville? Well, we're co- we're coming down here to the states. We got a uh, we're going to probably have a couple months of touring, yeah, so we're, we're going to be everywhere. Down here. We've got a lot of work to do yet, and once the states is done, we we've got to get back down to South America, Japan, Japan, Australia. Australia. It's still we're a, lot. Be back to a lot, a lot of a lot of stuff to cover. Yeah. We plan on touring for the next year. And in the process, we're going to write our next album. Okay. You know? yeah. So check out these guys. Uh, obviously, they're just doing a one-off tonight with the Alice Cooper uh, band. And then uh, they're going to be on tour, like I said, later this year with Saxon. And on the Sweden Rock Cruise for European fans out there, obviously, check these guys out. If you haven't got Juggernaut Justice, pick it up. And Monument of Metal is coming out uh, very shortly. And also, I believe it's going to be um, in uh, in Europe the same day. Is yeah, that yeah, going to be released? And then uh, we're going to support a tour here in America okay. during that uh, Monument of Metal time. And you guys want to talk about the website to go, tell the fans to go to? I don't, I don't, is it yeah, Anvil? Oh, yeah, yeah, we have a few websites. Okay. But, uh, we also have the uh, Metal Pounders Union, and everybody should get their Metal Pounder card. That's for sure. Okay. You know, Join our family photo album. I want to see you guys all there. And, uh, yeah, anvilmetal.com okay. is our website. Well, check it out, backstageaccess.com. We thank you for taking the time to watch this interview and check out Anvil.